Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lee and Haley Overtime Podcast. Brought to you by Shun Li, Chinese cuisine in downtown Lexington. It is fantastic. If you haven't had it yet, you call these guys. Make a reservation, 859-309-0305. Go visit them at, I believe, 111 Woodland Avenue, right on the corner of Maine and Woodland. Yes, downtown Lex. That's fantastic. There was uh, Arkansas's head coach was having dinner there last night, I was told. Oh, my gosh. Who? What? <laughs> Arkansas's head coach? <laughs> Their brand new head coach wow. was, was eating there last night. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know if we'd touch on that because not a lot of people are talking about it. No. So I didn't know if we'd talk about it today. Um, yeah, wow. Wow. Weird to see him in red, guys. John Calipari left Kentucky, now the official head coach for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Wow. <laughs> Um, that's about all I know about the state of Arkansas is that John and Ellen now will be living there. That's all I know. Well, it's the home of Tyson Foods. Mm -hmm. That's true. We know that. And why do we know that? Would you have known that before this I, week? I don't know if I would. I, do I don't know, think so. I think Jerry Jones has a bit of that. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's true. He's an Arkansas Razorback. Yeah. The owner of the Dallas Cowboys. There's a lot of money down there. Also, the Walmart? The Walmart people. The Walmart Although family? I saw where, oh my gosh, the NIL deals they'll get from Walmart. But then a lot of people that seem to have a little more knowledge, he goes, Walmart only gives academic scholarship money. They do not do anything for athletics. So just because the money's there doesn't mean you're going to get it. Yeah. Okay, uh, Lee Cruz, let's learn about the, uh, well, this will be the first question. What is the nickname of the state of Arkansas? And all of this information is from nationalgeographic.com. Actually, National Geographic kids.com so these are things like that show are you smarter than a fifth grader these kids would know anyway uh lee what is the nickname of arkansas it is the blank state the ozark the natural state wow a yeah. lot of nudity over there uh -huh. in what year did it become a state Ah. 1836. I'm sorry. That is oh, incorrect. Well, why didn't you give me a shot at it? I don't it? know. I just I was going to say 18 oh, something. 18 something would not have been the answer. Fine. What about Kentucky? I don't know. I'm strictly. 1792, I believe. Wow. I don't know. I don't have that page. 92, up. 94, something. And which, in order of statehood, mm -hmm. you know, we have 50 states. Yeah. In which. I don't even know how to ask. You this know what question. Kentucky is? What? The fifteenth. The fifteenth. Okay, so Maine beat us. Oh, those guys. You had your original thirteen colonies, then Maine, then Kentucky. Yes. Okay. So what about Arkansas? Hmm. You know, it's probably not that far off. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see who came in after. What's Tennessee like? The sixteenth? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Give me a minute. Will you let me work the problem? Sure. Go ahead. Sorry. Tennessee's the 16th, mm -hmm. Ohio maybe the 17th, uh, uh, I'll say the 20th. 25th. Eh, okay. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, what is the capital? Is it Little Rock? It is Little Rock. And Lee, what is the largest city? Is it Little Rock? It is Little Rock, Lee Cruz. What is the abbreviation for the state? A-R-K? A-K? Uh, a... I appreciate your first guess, a -R. as if any state has three letters. It's A-R. What is I the said state? A -R. I know, but you said A-R. No, I, my last answer was A-R. I know, Lee, but okay, good. Um, state bird. Bill Clinton. <laughs> and he flew away in search of pretty women. Um, state bird is Looking the... for birds. Yeah, mockingbird, mockingbird. The state bird is, don't tell me, a crow. Lee, I just said it was a mockingbird. Oh, I literally just said the state bird is a mockingbird. You said, don't tell me it's a crow. <laughs> I thought you were making a joke about Bill Clinton. Oh, that old mockingbird. Yeah. And then lastly, Lee, what is the state flower of Arkansas? Well, it's not goldenrod, is it? No. Again, another Bill Clinton reference. Yeah. Wow. Is it uh, the azalea? No. Don't tell me. Okay. Is, it, uh, is it something I know of? Honeysuckle. Is it something I've heard of? Marigold. Is it something I've heard of? <laughs> You've yelled at me for speaking, so forgive me for pausing. It starts, it's two words. I don't, don't give the me state, two. It's a blank blank. It's a blank blank. It's a blank blank. A poppy seed. That is one word. Uh, but it, it is? Yes, but it starts with a fruit. The first word is the name of a fruit. Hmm. 
Gin Blossom. Blossom is the second word. Oh, Orange Blossom. No. Uh, apple blossom. Bingo. There she The goes. old apple blossom the is old the apple official blossom. flower of Arkansas. Arkansas. Now, what if you're just Kansas? You ever think of that? I do. Because all Kansas is is a lonely word without the R in front of it. I know. You ever think of that? Mm, yes. I want to say Arkansas. Keeps me up at night. It keeps people around the world up at night because there's a lot of things we do here in America that don't make a lot of sense. Mm. Now, anyway, as a lifelong Kentucky fan and you witnessed all 15 years of John Calipari's career as the head coach of the men's basketball team at the University of Kentucky, how are you doing? I'm all right. Yeah. How well, did you we'll react see. to the video he posted? Well, I was sad for it him. It is sad. I like so I've had I don't know half dozen interactions with John Calipari and he's always been the consummate professional and gentleman. Yes, you know I've got to spend a little time with him and and he's super nice and and uh, a good guy and you think about all the money that he's raised for charitable organizations, how he's uh, gone above and beyond to be philanthropic mm-hmm. to help. Mm-hmm. Not just use his name for good. Yes, yeah. and you know when we had those storms that moved through Western Kentucky, you know how he would call to action and or the flooding in Eastern Kentucky. Mm-hmm. That guy was on point, mm-hmm. doing all those wonderful things for us. Yeah, I, I really am fond of him. Me too. Me too. You know the last- that being said. <sighs> His job is to win championships. Yes. That's the gig when you come to Kentucky. Yeah. You don't, and he did that. He did that. He did win one. He won. He did, and then the game changed a little bit, and he yeah. still was trying to force his old model of grabbing young NBA future talent, And but now the game's changed with COVID and all the rule changes, and now you got graduate players, uh, graduate students. you got old guys with receding hairlines knocking down threes. Yeah. And these young men that are eight months out of high school are having to be put in an environment where they're not seasoned. And I don't know how much coaching you can give, no matter how talented they are, if a better coach team that understands teamwork and synchronicity, it's tough Yeah, to beat them just with raw talent. Mm-hmm. And he was getting his clock cleaned. And that was rough. But what I've enjoyed seeing, you know, I think it – I do think this is the right move, and I think that's kind of the overall thing, is that he's leaving, giving Kentucky a fresh start. Because, yeah, the the system just wasn't working anymore. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't. And he can't have been having that much fun. No. All the hate he's been getting. The fans haven't been having that much fun. No. It's just been kind of a letdown every season yeah. the last four years. And so I think this is good. He can have a fresh start, fresh model, fresh place, administration, everything good. And Kentucky fans, it's time to, yeah, get back and you know enjoy what? it again and, and not be so sad all the time. And I will say this. If for some reason, if he figures it out and he goes and wins a national championship at Arkansas, I'm going to be happy for him. Yes. And I'm also going to laugh at the idiots that we have yeah. that are on the bandwagon with us that we may not like so much. That are are gonna that are so dismissive dismissive of the guy, mm-hmm. and they want to do the hateful stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll be happy for him and Ellen. Not so I'm, much for Arkansas, but I'll be happy sure, for him. Sure, sure, absolutely. You know, you got to remember he did so much for this state. And what is amazing is how many NBA players he coached. Yeah, that's a like, sore spot. But see, that right there as a Kentucky fan is a sore spot. When you say that, that oh. kind of irritates me. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Why? Explain. Because you have that plethora of talent, and in the past five, six years, you've shown nothing for it. Yeah, yeah. So when you sort of hype the fact that's what you're doing, it would be the— Well, you weren't mad about it years ago. The first six, eight years. No, because it's here. a byproduct. So it, it's like this: if if I'm on the board of directors, which I consider myself to be on the board of directors for the University of Kentucky Big Blue Nation. Oh, okay. Just okay. like you may be, I, okay. I I love to hear the good. Oh, we were so profitable in 2012, record profits. And guess what? We were so profitable, we got to give away millions of dollars to charity mm-hmm. as a byproduct. Sure. That makes me happy. Hey, we're doing well and we're doing good. Now we're losing money. The company is in record default. And you're coming to the board of directors and you're telling me, but we gave away millions in charity. We didn't hire you to give away millions in charity. We gave you money so we could be profitable. So when you start going down that line of, 
Look at all the NBA players we're producing. What did, what good did it do us? Mm-hmm. I'm happy for those kids. I'm very happy for them. But it didn't do us, the board of directors, the BBN, any damn good. Mm-hmm. That's my point. Okay, sounds great. Yeah. Well, you wanted me to explain it. No, I know. Okay. And you do. No, right. Awesome. Okay, well, what else? What do you mean, what else? <laughs> well, I don't know where to go from there. You got very impassioned, and I was just letting you feel. Well, I thought you were interrogating me. No, I wasn't. Hmm. Not everything's an interrogation. I genuinely was asking why, and you explained it, and I think it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I got a little lost in the board of directors. Analogy, it's, but I understand. No, analogy. I know, but I had to stop and think about that. It makes make it make sense, but I did. Why did you have to make it make sense well, when it did. was explained thoroughly? Okay, you're right. Don't do this. You're gonna piss me off now. I didn't do. Why what have I done? Patronizing. I'm not patronizing. Okay, okay. okay. That, why? Why are you doing that? I didn't do anything. I genuinely didn't do anything. No, I'm curious as to why it wasn't a great analogy for you. Like, oh, yeah, Lee set it up and knocked it down nicely. All right. Instead, don't do that. Don't patronize. Instead, you're attacking me going, oh, I I, I got lost in the analogy. I don't understand why you were lost. I'm sorry. I can't explain my brain to you. Mm. And I don't feel that I'm allowed to right now, honestly. (laughs) No, because I may have done a poor job and I'll correct it next time I'm holding court. It is all good. Anyway... Um, well, what else is going on? Tell me about your um, uh, banana ball experience. Oh my gosh, you guys, I was talking about on the show this week. So I was off for several days because I recently had my birthday. And so my mom and I went on a little girl's trip to a city I've never been before, Savannah, Georgia. I've been to Savannah. I like it. I loved it. It's a river town. It is a, ri- a river city. I always think it's a oceanside place, but not really. I mean, the ocean's right there, though. Yeah, it ain't that close. 20 minute Uber. Well, 20 minutes, but yeah. it's not on the beach. I know, but I'm saying it's close in my head when I was in Savannah proper. I was like, okay, we're going to go to the beach tomorrow. Oh, Got to get ready for that drive. And then I'm like, it's a 20-minute ride. Did you go to the park where they shot Forrest Gump? Yep. Chippewa Square. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went there, did the Old Town Trolley Tour, which I highly recommend. We did that the first morning we were there. It's a 90-minute trolley tour, open-air to- trolley, and we saw so much. There's so much history in Savannah. They had to take the bench out of the park yeah. while Forrest was sitting there with a box of chocolates mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because people were, well, they were graffiti and degradation all around it. There was mm-hmm. all of that. Yeah. And then yeah. they, and people, it was backing up. You know, there'd be a, a big long line. People wanting to sit there. And, and of course, I mean, it's an iconic film. So why wouldn't you want to be in one of the most iconic scenes in an iconic film? So they still have the area. They show you on the tour exactly where they right. filmed it. But now the bench and the suitcase yeah. can be seen in the visitor center. Right. So they're still in town, but you have to go into the visitor center to see mm-hmm. them. So I got to see that. Got to see, you know, a couple of haunted places and things like that. And it was awesome. But definitely one of the highlights of the trip beyond going to Tybee Island, beyond the tours, beyond the great food. Loved our bed and breakfast. We stayed in a bed and breakfast historic in the I'll historic district. That. I've done it once. Hated it. Why? I don't want to eat with people that I don't know. I don't want to be sitting really? at you a Really? You seem small... so friendly and easy to talk to. I don't want to be sitting at a table and somebody asking me, now, what do you do? Piss off is what I do. Get away from me. Let me Y'all, have, he's serious. Let me have my Lee coffee. is the most unapproachable human you've ever met in your no, life. No, that's not true. No, it is. People approach me all the time. I know, but they I wish just, they hadn't as I soon just as you begin speaking. I just don't want to deal with people asking questions. I don't mind them saying hi and hello. It's not, it's not people that recognize me, if that's what you're trying to infer. I'm not. I, I No, I'm talking about a complete stranger. I know. That irritates me. I'm sorry God built us for community, Lee. That must really be something you're going to deal with when you get to heaven. Why the others, God? (laughs) Why wasn't I good enough? No, they're in the club. I don't mind that. What club? The heaven club. Oh, they're they're good people because they're in the club. It's like when you walk around Nashville and you see somebody wearing a big blue nation outfit. Yes. I'll talk to them. Now, what's a big blue nation outfit? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's, of course, a dickie. You start with that. Oh, my gosh. A royal blue dickie under... A white sweater. Right. Oh, my gosh. Just like Uncle Eddie would have done. checkered pants. Or Cousin Eddie. Yeah. What'd you say? Uncle Eddie? I said Uncle Eddie, and I don't know why. He's Cousin Eddie. Um, 
I loved it. The bed and breakfast was fantastic. Did you talk to strangers? Oh, all the time. Ugh. Loved it. Ugh. But not. All, I was usually the one starting the conversation. Because I'm like, well, why not? Yeah, this... so I don't want that. Well, trust me. I'll never approach you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyway, so it was wonderful. But I went to a Savannah Bananas game. Yes. Heard all about it. Not from you, but from what I've seen and read. It's fantastic. It's the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball. Yes. Sold out most of the time. The entire season is sold out before the season begins. It's nuts. You can get resale tickets for four times face value. I was lucky enough to get them because mm -hmm. my sweet little cousin, Lena, little, she's 25 years old and a young professional, her longtime boyfriend plays for the Savannah Bananas. So if you are lucky enough to get to go to one of these amazingly entertaining games, cheer for number 13, Mr. Dalton Malden. He got us tickets and we got to go, my mom and I. It was a blast mm. entertainment from before the game starts hours before the game starts there's mm. entertainment for fans outside inside your ticket includes free unlimited hot dogs hamburgers cheeseburgers chicken sandwiches chips and drinks you just go up to the concession stand and they hand you something yes. you don't have to pay for it yes and then they have other foods you can buy it's an all exclusive like resort all inclusive what i say all exclusive well, i'm in inclusive i'm sorry you're thinking of the heaven club no. um <laughs> Uh, anyway, so it was so fun. And yes, they actually play baseball. Well, they call it banana ball because they have changed the rules to make it more entertaining for fans. There's no walks. Instead, they're called sprints. Mm -hmm. um, there is, if a fan catches a foul ball, it's an out. Mm -hmm. um, multiple other things that I can't remember, but they hand out a sheet when you get there that explains these new rules. Did they win the game? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. Um, they, and they play uh, these... Patsies. Right. I mean, it's like, it, like you said, it's the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah. So they're playing the, Washi but these are the all, Washington Generals. Yes. Yeah, the team that, so they're in on the act. They played the party animals, was yeah, this team. The party animals. Um, and so, like, in the they case. They don't even have a city. In the case of my cousin's boyfriend, he is a former college baseball player. Yeah. And so they're all former players or players that had an injury or players that just really enjoy it. And my according to my cousin, you still can. I don't know. I don't know what the terminology is. Drafted. Still get to the big leagues you or whatever get drafted from and, there. And move to the bigs. Yeah. So, But it's not a sanctioned Major League Baseball event. No. Yeah. Yeah. So the guys on the party animals, they're hoping to be moved up to the Savannah Bananas? I don't know, actually. I did a lot of reading ahead of the game and then even during the game and then after the game, trying to understand this concept. Yeah, about the league, and they're expanding the league. It seems like I saw the Savannah Bananas, though. They did a road game someplace. At the Houston Astros Stadium, and it was sold out yes. ahead of the Astros So game. they're legitimately becoming the Harlem Globetrotters. Yes, they are. Of baseball to where, I mean, the, back in the heyday, like in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, the Harlem Globetrotters would sell out. Oh, yeah. Metal Arc Lemon. Yes, Metal Arc Lemon. Curly Neal. Curly Neal. All those guys. Yeah, so anyway, they did that, and they have pictures of that all over the stadium and things like that. And, um, yeah, so they played out, and all the players were saying it was like the most amazing night of their lives because they're playing in front of a sold-out MLB crowd. Yes, it was for the Astros, but a lot of people were also there to see the Savannah Bananas because mm -hmm. they're so fun. It oh, was awesome. So it was in front of the Astros. Yes, they played ahead of the game. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, as far as my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're a banana fanatic, mm -hmm. they had ice cream. They I got myself a banana split. What do these guys get paid? I don't know. And I, of course, Google that. But I'm not, And I could have just asked my cousin, but it felt indecent, so I didn't. But then I tried to Google it, and I found conflicting answers Because uh, minor league players in the majors make nothing. I know. They're, but because this isn't exactly for, that. Uh, a signing bonus. If, you, if you're an actual talent that they do believe you're going to make it to the majors, you when you get drafted highly, you'll get a signing bonus, which can be good money, not great money. And they'll let you learn the game, the big league way, mm -hmm. in the minors. Yeah. But you're playing against guys that are making 15000 a year. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that on like a lower level, let's say ice hockey or baseball mm -hmm. or basketball. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys will have second jobs. Or TV. Or lower TV, yes. Yeah. Uh, second, third jobs. Um. I've always had two or three jobs. Have you? Yeah. What are they? Well, stand-up comedy was one. Mm -hmm. I used to do radio as well. So I always had two or three jobs. Because yeah. you never know when you're going to lose one of yeah, them. Yeah, true. In your case especially. Yeah. Um, 
I've only ever had one job at a time my whole life. I'm sure I'm very blessed to do that, but it's also because I don't think I can handle it. I'm not a person like I've done freelance gigs here and there, but as far as actual job jobs at the same time, I just I, mentally, I don't think I could handle it. I mean, I'd do it if I absolutely had to. Like, you know, some bills got to be paid. I would do it if I had to, but I've never had to. Thank you, Lord. But uh, uh, I think it would just stress me out. Yeah. You get used to it. Sure. So, Savannah Bananas, 10 out of 10, number 13, Dalton Malden, cheer on my boy. Mm-hmm. Okay. They had these, they have cheerleaders but the, it's like or they have a dance team they're called the banana splits and it's like little girls i bet ages six to twelve and they do these whole routines and matching little outfits they are adorable then they have the nanas which are senior women mm. and it is amazing they come out there and do these little dance routines amazing then they have the man nanas okay and it's a group of proudly portly gentlemen mm-hmm. that are like and it says the dad bod cheerleading squad. Mm-hmm. It is men who are proud of their beer bellies mm-hmm. and their man boobs. And mm-hmm. they come out there and they put, they had live auditions right there on the field. They had pulled mm-hmm. random people out of the stands that could come out there and show their moves. A guy took his shirt off and did what I think we thought was, he thought was the worm. Mm-hmm. But it really was just him lifting himself up and slamming to the ground. Mm-hmm. But, the, but the passion was there and it was so entertaining. Like Burt Kreischer. Like, a, yes, uh, like a team, a, a dad bod cheerleading squad made up of Burt Kreischer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was amazing. Hmm. Do, do they not have anything for the dads that are at the game? What do you mean? That may have brought their kids and they got a wife that's a piece of work and who nags all day. Don't they have entertainment for him? They have a, a a very pretty girl dressed in a bell costume, and her name is Princess Potassia, like potassium yeah. from a banana. Do you that's, get it? That's it? Yeah. Yeah. But she was pretty great. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well. Hmm. Lee, I don't think the Savannah Bananas are really geared toward this fictional man you've created. Every other sports team is. Okay. Man. Just saying. Well, if you see Lee Cruz at a bed and breakfast near you, offer him, have a body your banana split, and ask him where he's from and what he does. You're not going to see me at a bed and breakfast. I loved it. It was so fun. The food was fantastic. Yeah. I adored the historic parts of Savannah. So, I, I, I didn't. I, I was on a golf trip uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I stayed in a hotel, but my buddies stayed at an Airbnb. Why did you stay in a hotel? I didn't want to be around them. And, and you're still friends? Yeah. I could never go on a girl's trip and be like, fine, you all stay there. I'll be in a hotel. No, I love those guys. I'd never hear the end of it. They'd but, be like, something's wrong. No, there's nothing and wrong. I'd be like, there's something wrong there's if one of my friends didn't want to stay in the group. I don't want to be around their bathroom habits. I don't want to, I, you know, I... Oh, no, no, I see what the truth is. All of you that. don't want them to be aware of your habits. No, I don't, I don't have any habits. Oh, you seem like a real bathroom prude. Yeah, Coming I, from one. I want it to be clean. I want. Oh, y'all didn't have... I want fresh what, air. What was it, a one-bedroom Airbnb? There? They had a cabin that had maybe two bathrooms, so you're sharing a bathroom with a dude. How many guys is it? There was like six or seven or eight. Oh, no. I don't want to be a part of that. Mm-mm, you need a minimum of four bathrooms. I want my scenario. own bathroom. Okay. I want my own bed. I want. They were solid. sharing beds? One bed. Oh all my gosh! One bed, two they bathrooms. All slept together. Wow! Get it was you know head here, kingdom. feet there, head here, feet here. Oh know? my gosh! Just like in the uh, yep, I know what Willy you're, Wonka. Yeah, none of us can. Charlie yeah, Buckets. We all have to make that reference, even though we yeah. all envision it when That's it. That's how they slept. Yikes! Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. So anyway, and and then the bed. I've stayed at a bed and breakfast. Yeah. I think it was in North Carolina a long time ago. And I think there may have been a community bathroom. Whoa, no. And it was uh-uh. a nice bed and breakfast, by the way. It was uh-uh. a very big old house, but on the floor I was on, there was only one bathroom. Oh, absolutely You'd not. have to knock and do it. I don't want that. Okay, but you stated a low-budget bed and breakfast. Wasn't that low? I'm sorry. I would not share a bathroom. The last time I had to share a bathroom was when I had to live in the dorms my freshman year of college, and I was devastated coming from a girl who grew up with her own bathroom yeah i grew up i, I was devastated you had out. to share a bathroom with your mother did you not yeah that's different no it's not i don't want to share a bathroom with your mother i don't want to you know share what? it with i don't think that'll father. hurt her feelings <laughs> <laughs> 
Le- okay. No, I I get that. For for me and my mom, like, I don't know. It's different. There are certain people I don't mind sharing a bathroom with. A bathroom is a sacred place. For okay, me. for you. Yes. Okay. I not only do the obvious. I also what is it. the obvious? Well, you know, I transfer. <laughs> I'm in the shipping department. God. I got a ship here and a ship there. Where's uh, the ship there? Well, you just ship everywhere. <laughs> And I'm shipping. I ship my pants. I'm shipping all day. <laughs> Only the greatest Kmart commercial of all time. Kmart. I ship the bed. I'm oh. saying ship. Oh, you're going to love it. I've got a brilliant idea. It came to me at lunch today. Oh, my gosh. What is it? How, or, how's this? i got to pitch it to the Snickers people. Okay. Remember the great Snickers ad where it was Betty White. You're just not yourself. Or whoever. You're yeah, not you're yourself not just, when you're hungry. You know, yes. Yeah. All oh, right. yeah. All right. P- okay. Picture this. All right. I'm shutting my eyes for those of you just listening. Andy Reid. Standing there. The Chiefs coach, Kansas City Chiefs coach. Travis Kelsey is in his face barking at him. It's like it really happened. I can envision it so clearly. That's why it's going to be funny. And he's yelling at him, I don't know why you did that. That was a stupid decision. You're an idiot. Blah, blah, blah. And Andy Reid says, Taylor, you're just not yourself. And hands over a Snickers. And it's actually Taylor Swift. It's a home run. No. What Wait. do you mean, no? It's a touchdown. Okay, it's a touchdown. See? Fine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let me do the pitch, because you blew it right there. How did I blow it? It's a home run. That's it's advertising foot- talk. Okay, well, if you heard this, please don't go pitch this to Snickers, because Lee was so stupid to have shared this actually genius idea. Yeah. Now, what the ad would be for Snickers. Well, yes. Sure. We're just revitalizing their old campaign, but we're using the biggest names. The biggest names. And I think it'd be funny. Taylor goes, I'm sorry, coach. I'm sorry. I'm new to football. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, what was I telling you? Who knows? Whoever knows? I mean, I'm all ears. Hmm. I had a little... Oh, we're talking about the bathrooms. You are you ship in, ship out, ship out. Back. Oh yeah, when, I, when I'm in there, let me. Why did I not? Why did I bring this get, back here? Before I get to that, though, I had a little cute uh, waitress, bartender, whatever she may be. Was she behind the bar? Yes. Then she's a bartender. Yeah. Get it, girl. It, it didn't seem like it was a real gig for me. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, because uh, you were there at lunch, maybe it was a server. She, and she's adorable. The bar. She's she's just a cutie pie. Hi, little cutie. But her ears were massive. <laughs> they stuck out like Dumbo from the Seven Dwarves. And I thought there's got to be something you can do. You can wear a hat, a headband, <laughs> pin those back. Bless her heart. I, it, it felt I, like I, she I, was I, almost artificially pushing them out. Like they were so satellite far, dishes. Like could you see in the air? Yeah. Like they're so far forward that yes. the whole part that's normally in the side of our head is in. All of When her she ear. cleans her ears with Q-tips, even though ear doctors tell us not to do this, she comes at this angle. Right, right. <laughs> she brings them in forward to clean those right. ear holes. She could. Instead of in yeah. from the side. And she's adorable. All but Disney kept, characters are. <laughs> but I kept looking at her going, yeah. I fault, you know, and I know monetary issues and things like that can get in the way, but when a, a an adult has extremely forward attention grabbing and possibly embarrassment causing ears i blame their parents wow. you didn't get that kid's ears pinned s- pinned back when they were a kid knowing the Can ridicule you do that yes i thought you just did that to dobermans i've know of people that had their ears tacked back i didn't know that well what do you do i don't know lee i'm not the doctor gorilla glue no lee it's surgery not home improvement hmm. anyway I mean, yeah. Uh, oh, anyway, back to the. So, when are you guys going out? Well, <laughs> shout it out right now. She can hear, she can hear it. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Every person is beautiful exactly as they're made. But just know, no, we'll talk adorable. about you on your on his. She was adorable. I just noticed it and thought, wow. Were you the only? <laughs> thought, wow. I nearly made a tasteless joke earlier, but I didn't. About me? No. Oh. About someone else. But then I thought, no, that is mean spirited. I'm not going to make it. And then you do this. Mm. And then I think, man, I could. But this is an anonymous person. Yeah. Yeah. No harm, no foul. Okay. Anyway. Um, okay. Well, what's going on? What have you been doing while I was gone on my vacay? Well, that's the thing I was going to tell you. So if I'm in the bathroom, I'm also You've meditating. You've just been in the bathroom since I've been gone. 
I like that. The staff the must love that. Where's That's Lee? a good place to be. You You've got a mirror ma- that you can talk to yourself. Are you at home or at work? Home. Or are you on the golf trip? Uh, you do this in any ago. and all bathrooms. Mainly at home. But okay, yeah, so at home you're I, doing what? I, I, I talk to myself sometimes looking at myself in the mirror. Asking questions like why? <laughs> <laughs> like give me an example. Did you? When's the last time you did this? Uh, this morning. This morning. Okay, so take I'm us sure. back to this morning. Well, I'd rather not share what it was about, but I asked myself. You brought it up. I didn't tell you what the content is. I'm just telling you that I talk to myself all the time. Okay. Well, there's nobody there. I should hope so. You've got a party going on downstairs. Well, I don't mean, upstairs. I mean, why, The Lee? conversation then walks down the stairs and <laughs> goes into the kitchen and the living room. It never stops. You talk out loud. I, I, I want to set up. I am this close to a video that I saw <laughs> the other day of a man who was in traffic, and in front of him was a guy with a, 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 a puppet. A ventriloquist puppet. Sure. And he's apparently working it. And the puppet is yelling at him. Oh. And he's kind of like nodding his head like, I get it. And the guy is narrating. He goes, I'm I'm behind this guy in traffic, and he's got a, a head of a mannequin puppet. And he's chewing himself out. This has been going on the entire Lee, time. You've got to get one of those. <laughs> yeah, I could just. We've got yell to. At when myself. you're mad at yourself, get the guy. <laughs> yes, so the, the fear and anxiety could embody itself. See, I never. You and I have talked about this before on the show that you open. You talk aloud to yourself. All the time. I do not. Mm. But I have heard in therapy that it is beneficial for people like. Me, that I suffer from lifelong anxiety, and I do this thing called, no, a lot of people that have anxiety, uh, it's called ruminating. And it's where you get stuck on a certain thought in your head, and you kind of can't, can't let it go. And it could be the most minor thing, like, mm-hmm. let's say you were late to your dentist appointment, and you're beating yourself up about it all day. And then you're thinking all day, how can I prevent this from happening again? And, oh, everyone at the dentist's office hates me, and da da da, da. And in reality, it's not that big of a freaking deal. Mm-hmm. My therapist has told me and what I've read, seen like on therapy TikTok stuff, they're saying sometimes like you, what you have to do is get out of your head. Mm. And if you feel crazy, fine. But if you're by yourself, say it out loud to yourself. And I'll do this sometimes. Like if I'm ruminating on a thought or a concept or something, I'll say out loud. I'll be like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like I'll be in the car and be like, no one at the dentist's office cares that I was 10 minutes late. I apologized. I offered to move to another date. They actually said, it's not a big deal. Come on back. You know, and sometimes saying it out loud makes it real and gets it out of your head. So I kind of see what you're saying. I don't do it that often. Like you're in a constant conversation. For me, I do it as like a break that ruminating stance and move on. So I've done that where it's not just the continuous running dialogue. If you were eavesdropping, you'd understand the entire thought process. Sometimes I'll just blurt it out (laughs) for no reason. Oh, like, well, I love you. (laughs) <laughs> or I'll say, that's the dumbest blankety blank thing you've ever said. <laughs> and no one's around. And all of that just pops out for no reason. And I, I don't even know why I said it. Like, I really don't. I've done this. Where I'll be sitting there and go, <laughs> well, you're my girl. Or, <laughs> and nobody's around. And I, and I go, why did I just say that? <laughs> Who am I talking Same to? Same thing. Will you say mean things to yourself that just blurt out? Oh, like yeah. Like blurt out. When you blurt out, is it usually you're thinking about saying something to another person or is it it blurt, you blurt it out talking to yourself? I, if you want to experience <laughs> my life, okay. all you have to do is watch the scene of Leonardo DiCaprio oh. in um, uh, Once, Once Upon, upon a, time a Time in, in Hollywood. Hollywood. When Why he, did we both just say that like we were in a competition to see who could get it out <laughs> When faster. he berates himself in yes. his trailer. For drinking, right? Well, because he blew the line and he's, I eat whiskey sours. Oh, you only need it too. Oh, and yeah. he starts to have another drink and he gets mad. Oh, you drunk. I'll kill you. Yeah, you yeah. Blank and he blank and he's looking at himself in the mirror. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a Thursday night. That's a th- <laughs> For me, I'm angry <laughs> at me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. But I laughed so hard at that scene because it resonated so well. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Good you, job, Leo. Oh, good job. Because I think Quentin, if I read that somewhere, he let him go. And that was, I mean, Quentin wrote it, set it up, but I think Leo really perfected it. You know what I saw? And I don't know if it's true because I never saw the movie Django Unchained. Yeah. Another Leo movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, on TikTok now where I see everything. 
I saw a clip and it was like unknown fact about Django Unchained is there's a certain scene where he's um, he's given a big speech and he slams his hand down on his desk mm. and then he's doing a big talking scene and then blood starts pouring down his I hand. I think I read that, yeah. He actually, he cut, actually cut his hand on a broken glass on the table, not meaning to, and then continued his, mm -hmm. it was like 90 seconds of dialogue, just him. Yeah. And they no cuts and blood is pouring down his hand and he incorporates it into the scene toward the very end, like looks at it like, yeah. oh, God. Yeah. And then they said, as soon as they said cut, everyone on set just applauded him. Yeah. Because he, he and that's the one that made it in the film. The just, one take he did where he actually cut himself. He just yeah. plowed through and kept going. Similar story with Dustin Hoffman and John Voight in Midnight Cowboy. Really? The iconic scene. They're walking across the street. I'm walking here. Yeah. So a car ran the blockade. Yes, that's right. May, may have been a taxi. Ran the blockade. That's a close set. Drove on to the close set. And drove on and almost runs over Dustin Hoffman and John Voight. You can see John Voight's a little really confused and, and Hoffman's still in character. Bangs on the hood. I'm walking here. And doesn't break. I mean, that, those are the moments that, yeah. oh, so good. What a great line. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's real. It's true to, you know, that side of the country, but it's like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. And I love when that cut makes it in. You know, when things like that happen, the natural urge is to say, hey, 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 hang on, let's let's do this again. You know, but that's something I've learned in TV and really from you and things is just keep going, yeah. and, even if something crazy happens, unless it's, you know, mass loss of blood and death. Right. Even then. Even then, keep going. Yeah. The show must go on. The show must go on. Well, those moments are fun for me. I incorporate all that. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes when stuff goes wrong, my inclination is to be like, nah, start over, start over. No, but sometimes that. you got to let it go. I hate that. I know, I'm trying. I love it because for me, as a comic, I need information to spin or twist the phrase. And the more data you give me, the better chance I've got to make it funny. So now all this new information has arrived vis-a-vis -vis an accident or something that went wrong these are brand new jokes i got that i can craft i can make you know within seconds hopefully but you know i can do it that way that's why i don't ever want to break let's keep going there yeah. could be something funny in there yeah now what you do is you'll watch me search for the joke mm -hmm. and you get irritated if i don't have it right away and you try to shut me down and you oftentimes a new can attest We'll do an introduction to a piece, and we start. And maybe I stumble. Maybe I don't have the right words yet to get us going. But I'll just keep going because I'm kind of laughing at myself, and I'm thinking this is more information for me. And you're like, stop. We got to stop. Like, I don't want to stop. I want to keep going until I find the funny. Because my point to you is, so what, are we going to start over and then get a clean intro? Well, who cares? Who wants to watch clean? If you don't watch a clean intro, well, why don't you, you know, watch the news? You and I are dirty. We're filthy. We're I'm out here, here for the filthy intros. <laughs> We're here for the very unclean and unkempt. Sure. We're humans. We make mistakes, you and I. Especially you. God, you're awful. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other notes or performance things you want to correct me on today? Ah, uh, that's three so far. Well, so anything else? Any other complaints, criticisms? Hygiene. God knows help. I have none for you. <laughs> um. Anyway. Yeah. No, I to your point where and at least talking about like for on location and shooting an intro for a piece that you're going to see later on the show. Sometimes I will let you go, but a lot of times <laughs> I'm reacting to the sadness and deep despair I see behind the camera from the camera operator that's thinking Lee is dragging this what should be 30 second intro because he wasn't prepared and doesn't have good jokes ready and is floundering into a four minute intro that I will have to cut down to 30 seconds. Yes, that's his job. Yeah. It's called editing. What's your job? To find the funny. His job is to when edit did, it. When did, when were you going to find it? Well, I don't know. I'd like to have a shot. Well, we'd like, we've given you a shot, but after four minutes, we're all like, God in heaven. Four minutes? Lee, I've seen you do God a four minute woman. intro before and 350 of it not usable. 
that's fine. And then you get mad at me when I'm like, can we start over? You're like, why? This is gold. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Noah's here. Time, Noah, speak time. to this. Yes. There was one time we did a 30 minute intro. I remember very specifically in That's because you kept fighting me Was that the bowling thing? Oh, I'll never forget that day. And I think Lee (laughs) yelled at me for saying, let's start over. And I was like, was this working for you? Was this working for anyone? It was. Uh, It didn't. Thirty? You think we have a thirty-minute intro? No, we have. We have good stuff of me fighting you and Noah Day. Because there were several things in there that were funny, but you guys are so one-track minded, you couldn't get off the bowling thing, and it's like. Let's just play and have fun here and enjoy ourselves. You, you, you two are like when you go to Disney World, and instead of just meandering and enjoying yourself, no, we've got to ride to Space Mountain at 8 o'clock. Okay. So that's four performance notes you've given me today. I'm learning so much today. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate it. Good. Yeah. Well, let's implement it. Okay. Okay. Keep going. I don't want to end this podcast until you're ready. So keep going. What else do you want to learn? Man, <laughs> I don't know. You want to know the joke I nearly said earlier? Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to say, I should have said it. It's not going to hit now. It's not going to hit. That doesn't matter to me. I know it doesn't matter to you. Um, No, this is, I'm so mad I didn't say it. What was it? You said, the game, back to the John Calipari talk. Now, former UK head coach, current Arkansas Razorbacks head coach. Yeah. I feel like I've lost you as you tap that. Cold can on each of your fingertips. Yes. That felt good. Did it? Mm-hmm. Cool. You said, well, oh, if you get, you know, the game changed. You know, it worked for several years, and then it changed. And, you know, now all of a sudden with COVID rules and everything like that, uh, you said, now you got guys with their seating hairlines out there hitting threes. And I was like, man, yeah, I'm speaking of Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. See, that was good. I know, but I didn't say it. Yeah. We just talked about him in Arkansas, and it really would have hit earlier, but then I'm. Yeah. Bill. Let's say you were an intern at the White House. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm, and this is not a moral judgment. I'm sure you would have stood fast and said, no, thank you, sir. That's right. But I, I'm just curious. Would that have, is it the power? What is it? Because he's sort of doughy. He doesn't look like the most handsome man. I'm like Barack Obama's a good looking guy. Of course, yeah. the problem with Barack Obama, he's got integrity. And that's the worst thing about that man. Yeah. My God. But Clinton. Oh, Michelle, I yeah, love right. her. That's Only I mean. her. Now, it's, this is not a political judgment. I'm just not saying all, as, as a family man, he seems like he seems he's wonderful. wonderful. Yes. But what the heck? Would, would, it, would that somewhat be enticing? Here's what I think would be enticing. Speaking for myself, but also a lot of women, sometimes it's the, it's not like at least for me, it wouldn't be the power I'm attracted to. It's that such a powerful man is attracted mm. to me. Got it. That is, Got I think, it. what the issue is. It's not so much, oh, I want to be with him. He's so powerful. Yeah. It's if he gave me attention, gotcha. it would be like the most powerful man in America mm. has taken a shine to little old me. There's, that would be hard to turn down for a lot of women. There, there is not a night. I You'd have to stare in the mirror and say, no, there, you now quit it. He's doughy. And he's from Arkansas. Gross. There's not a night I don't dream of banging Hillary. (laughs) The The power. power. (laughs) That woman chose me? Wow. Yeah, no. Would it be the same to you? Like, No. A really powerful, like, I don't even know. I guess it doesn't. To me, that would be resignation. Um, what? Well, okay. Let's say there is. I'm not saying it, we're no, not no, talking no. about Bill Clinton anymore. No, I know. If we're Bill talking. Clinton we're talking took about. A shine to you. Yeah, that would be resignation. <laughs> I've given up on heterosexuality. <laughs> He's turned me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about if. Uh, is that a cigar? If it was a uh, if it was a Hillary type. Okay. Uh, a very powerful, a powerful political woman. woman. And we're 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 not talking someone super hot. Right, we're, well, we're talking, the two can coexist. They could, but it's a different feeling of Gal Gadot. I'm her PA, and she's like, "I need you tonight." <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I'm saluting the flag. <laughs> yes, I'm there. Storm, and I'm gonna find the flag. Storming the Israeli beach. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I. That's different. But if yeah, I think that I, I would never do it. But I'm thinking that would be resignation of, I'm not my own man anymore. I'll just be a kept individual i'm surrendering all my autonomy 
and at her beck and call, which is marriage for the most part, if I think about it. Okay, so in this scenario, <laughs> she's a married woman yet is trying to get with you. Well, I don't know. I, I'm just well, saying. Well, to be the she, exact opposite of the. Oh, yeah. if, oh, she's so she's just using me <laughs> yes. for my body. Yes. Well, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, if it's the same, you know, yeah. like the Lewinsky Clinton thing, they weren't together. He, mm. They were just, you know. Yeah. Cuckoo, cachoo in the Oval Office. Yeah. Uh, so same thing. But I'm trying to think what a similar. Let's say she's too old for you now, but let's say, uh, I was going to say, like, an, I'm trying to think. There's just no real, you know, there's no been, there's no female president oh. in America. So I'm trying to think who would be a political female. I just don't feel like any I'm going to say here that are very high in American politics. Like, I'm not going to say Elizabeth Warren and he'll be like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, or AOC mm-hmm. or. AOC is cute. She's very cute. Or, or like a lot, some of these are polarizing but that politically. Ain't gonna Let's work. just take it politics. AOC or Lauren Bobear, young, objectively attractive politician. Yeah. Well, AOC's Nancy out. Pelosi. Oh yeah. Kamala Harris. <laughs> she is a somewhat. She's attract- a very attractive. I woman. don't think I could stand two minutes of that conversation. Yeah. Though. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, like, I know that's the. Thing. I have got to leave. <laughs> I if you laugh one more time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Okay, know. well, let's say it's a female celebrity. Yeah. It let's, I feel like we're, we're, finding, we're having a hard time finding an equal, and that's a problem, man and woman politician on the yes. same level. Let's just say a female celebrity. Like, uh, who's the top female actress? Let's say Jennifer Aniston oh, is married. I was going to say Margot Robbie. Let's say, okay, Margot Robbie is married. Yes. And then she comes, meets you in yes. a little meet cute in a, in a cat in an Airbnb yes. on your golf trip, and she says, "I need it. And I need it now." We're not have to share a bathroom, are we? <laughs> as long as there are two separate bathrooms at this resort. Yeah. Good lord. Margot Robbie. I mean, what do you want me to do, uh, Lee? I don't know. <laughs> I gotta say yes, don't I? You're saying this to yourself in the mirror, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Go Robbie, well. How do I walk? Yeah. It's like, and who knows by the time this podcast comes out. This is what I've been telling my buddies. It's like Danny Hurley. Yeah. How do I say no to that? Yo, you got such good things over here. Are we here. still talking about a sex thing here? Yes. <laughs> I would do it. How do you say no to it? How do you say it? no? It, to Danny Hurley, if he's offered the UK job. Yes, Guys, this is called be. a callback and a full circle podcast. Just like right. that, we're back to the beginning about the coaching search for UK. You see, that's how the pros do it. But if if she's happily married, why oh, she, and now we're back. Why is she coming over here anyway? That's the kind of questions I'm going to. Uh, could you fill out this form, Marco? And that's what I don't think Monica really asked Bill. Bill, yeah, why are you coming after me? You want to get to? By the way, if you have a topic or a question you'd like Haley and I to address, it's ideas at leeandhaley.com. Oh, yes. Here's one. Should Lee get a dog? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, we've been talking about this on our show, the Lee and Haley show, um, over the last week and a half or so. And I, I've seen more interest from you in possibly getting a dog. Yeah, I'm actually considering it. Are you really? Uh, But another big issue that I didn't mention on the show is the bathroom issue. This poor dog's never going to get any sleep. (laughs) I got to get up four or five times. I'm going to wake, wake that guy up. Lee, he's going to wake you up a lot, too. Well, he's got an enlarged prostate as well? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so that's what's I don't have an enlarged prostate, by the way. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> Just because it bulges out a bit. Ew, gross. <laughs> you know, prostate never stops growing. That's true. You, Every man alive will get prostate cancer. The facts are you usually mercifully you will have died before. Yeah, that's actually true. Yeah, because prostates they just continue to grow and they become cancerous at some point. But your prostate, whoever you are listening to this podcast, may not become cancerous until you're 107. Thankfully, you're five minutes away from death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As you're crashing your car, laughing at this podcast. Yes. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to get a dog or not. You have had a, your eye on one from the Humane Society. His name humane- was Crew. What happened to him? Well, his name was Crew. He tried to share a bathroom. He with him. interned with Clinton and. Uh, uh, um, Bridget asked best sandwich toppings. Ooh, mm, okay. You know where I'm going to start them. with because I had a sandwich. Give me your favorite sandwich. I'm going to say mayonnaise right away is pretty much a utilitarian 
device that makes and improves every sandwich. Name a sandwich that mayonnaise doesn't enhance. Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo. <laughs> That's more of a dessert sandwich. That's like the ham in the dough oh, yeah. with the powdered sugar you dip in raspberry. Uh, no, mayonnaise, I mean, even a grilled cheese. Mayonnaise is the secret ingredient on grilled cheese. You I put it on the bread. I could do that, though. You put it on the bread yes. before you grill it. Yes. So the mayonnaise Ooh. soaks. Yeah. yeah. Again, I just I saw like Ina Garten make a grilled cheese on TikTok, uh, and she put butter uh, on Who one. is this guy? Ina Garten. <laughs> She's married to... Ina got a Vita. Ina got a Vita. Um... No, she's a famous chef, Lee. And she made a delicious. Yeah. All she's I the know, Barefoot Contessa. Oh, I know Julia Child. Well, it, no, you don't, because it's just Julia Child. <laughs> what do you mean? It's just Child singular. <laughs> Julia Childs. No, it's just Child. Hmm. Yes. I think you're wrong. I think it's Julia Childs. Cookbook is great. <laughs> yeah, that's, See, well, helping, yeah, it's a possessive show. The art of French cooking. Yes. Yeah. Portrayed by Meryl Streep in the movie with Amy Adams. Julia. Julie and Julia. Yeah, something like that. Julia eats Julia. No, no. That's, that's a different, a different movie. film. Yeah. No. Uh, anyway, I go mayonnaise. What do you say? Mustard. I know you love mustard. I love mustard. I love a whole grain mustard. Cheese. What about? I gotta the, have cheese. Is that the it. mustard with the seeds in it? Yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite sandwich? If you're gonna have, let's say, what's your favorite kind of cold cut sandwich? Probably a ham. Okay. What all's on it? What kind of bread? Take me to the whole. I could put lift us uh, up. white bread. White bread. Tomato. Cheese. Ham. Well, of course. Ham, cheese, tomato. We started with ham. I yeah, thought. I know, but then you didn't even say bread. So what are you just holding a stack of? Ham? I said white bread. <laughs> Uh, then I'd probably put the pickles and uh, mayonnaise, maybe some mustard. Mm -hmm. No lettuce. No. You don't like lettuce. Lettuce. It gets Here we go. Way. Here we go. And if I'm having a great day, it's coming from Jersey Mike's. White bread, turkey, ham, bacon, provolone, mm -hmm. banana peppers, dill pickles, vinegar, Salt, pepper, oregano, a little bit of mayonnaise, mm -hmm. yellow mustard. Boom. Best sandwich on the planet. Yeah. I don't even, I want to hear anything else. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jersey Mike's. I appreciate the sponsorship that I know you're sending this way. Free sandwiches for life. Perfect. I plan on getting prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting question. If you could remove one color in the whole world, what color would that be and why? What? See, uh, uh, initially, I thought brown. This table would be gone. Well, it would be white mm -hmm. or blue or whatever. Oh, my gosh. I feel like every color now is integral. Yeah, and that's what I started thinking. I mean, I like if you've been out to the desert, the desert's beautiful and there's a lot of brown. There. Mm -hmm. I miss the green when I'm in the desert mm -hmm. and the blues. I don't know. I'd say silver. Silver. I don't really care for the color silver. It's great at Christmas. Yeah. That's true. See, any color, then when you tell me where it is, I'm, but then we wouldn't have any silver cars, which silver is such a popular car color. Yeah. Silver jewelry. Mm -hmm. Silver hair. Looks great. I don't have silver hair. Well, what do you have? You know, when I was a kid, I thought it was the silver, silver war. Silver War. <laughs> I did. I think you're not alone in that. And I think I, I thought, thought that. I wonder one. what the Gold War is. Oh my god! You had a Silver War. You had to have a Gold War. No, Lee. The Gold War was was between the USSR and America. It was right after World War oh, II. Yeah. That was the Gold War. <laughs> wow. I think a lot of kids. Yeah. What's an another a popular thing that I got wrong a lot was. Uh, the Christmas later on will conspire as mm -hmm. we drink. I thought it was, and I thought quite literal, and it made sense. Later on will perspire yeah. as we dream. But like we're, we're in front a of a fire. fire. We're going to be sweating. And yeah, as a kid, hot. I thought, what a gross lyric. But I mean, it makes sense. Sure. Yikes. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I really want a sandwich right now. Well, one of the best memes of Miss Heard statements was from a gentleman who sat in his car and a lady asked and you may have seen this one i don't know that i have but i'm well, sure I'll watch enjoy it. watch the word that you read wrong and you're so embarrassed by it and the word pops up and he says 
man's laughter. And he's like, why is he getting five to ten years for laughing? It's man's it's slaughter. Man's slaughter. Yeah. And on that note, we will end this week's podcast. Okie dokie. Who's it brought to you by, Lee? It's brought to you by Shun Li. Chinese cuisine. It is the absolute best in town. This city needed that, by the way. I was having that discussion with someone the other day asking me, is that Shun Li place good? I said, it's absolutely fantastic. Yes. And I can't remember the last time this town had a elegant Chinese restaurant, yes. and that's what Shun Li is. Best wonton soup you'll ever have. Trust me, put a little soy sauce in there. Everything is good. Uh, they got happy hour at the bar seating. It's a beautiful place. 111 Woodland Avenue, right there off Main Street. You can call for reservations, 859-309-0305. Shun Li. Go by and say hello to our friends. Yes, tell them Lee and Haley sent you, and enjoy a delicious meal, cocktails, whatever you want. Uh, right in, as Lee said, any comments, questions, topic areas you want to hear Lee and I talk endlessly about to ideas at leeandhaley.com. Follow us on social media, just search Lee and Haley. And then please subscribe, rate, review this podcast. And if you're watching on the Kentucky Sports Radio YouTube channel amidst all the other videos about Coach Cal's departure from Kentucky, we appreciate you watching and continue to, please. We'll see you next time, guys. And you'll hear us next time. Yes. Yes. Okay. This has been the Lee and Haley Overtime Podcast. Good night and good luck. Good luck.